emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases and their infection control practices. Emerging diseases are new identified organisms causing new health problems. Re-emerging diseases are known organisms which have previously been controlled but are now increasing in incidence. Emerging infections Factors that contribute to emergence include mutation of known agents, changing human demographics, and changes to the environment. Many diseases have been traced back to animal carrier hosts. Transmission occurs when host-human contact takes place. New diseases have emerged over the past 30 years. These new diseases have had a major impact on health and medical costs. It has also demonstrated the impact of the movement of people on the spread of disease. Coronaviruses are named for their crown-like appearance under electron microscope. They are responsible for the outbreak of many new types of influenza-like illnesses. They are found worldwide, transmitted through person-to-person -person contact, and droplets. The first case of SARS occurred in 2003 in Vietnam. A third of patients with SARS developed respiratory failure. It has resulted in the deaths of nearly 800 people worldwide. SARS initially presents with common flu-like symptoms. In 2012, a novel coronavirus was identified in the Middle East. MERS, as it became known, caused rapid onset respiratory failure, with half the diagnosed patients dying from the disease. Cases of MERS have occurred in all the Gulf states and a few cases in Europe, North Africa, and recently the United States. MERS presents initially as a respiratory infection with fever. It should be suspected in patients living in the GCC countries who present with these symptoms. Potential transmission can occur when a healthcare worker is exposed to aerosolized droplets from the patient due to coughing, airway procedures, and suctioning. 2014 has seen a sudden rise in the cases of MERS, indicating a potential for an epidemic. Other types of influenza virus have been linked with mild seasonal outbreaks and more severe epidemics such as swine flu and bird flu. Transmission can occur from wild to domestic birds, with subsequent transmission to pigs or human, resulting in symptomatic disease. The infection may produce generic flu-like symptoms. Transmission occurs via droplet and contact with infected persons. Not all types of flu produce mild symptoms. The 1918 flu epidemic killed more people than the First World War. It was followed by other epidemics. Cross-species transmission may lead to infection in the new host. Novel H1N1 virus, or the swine flu outbreak in 2009, led to more than 284,000 deaths worldwide to date. Swine flu is a hybrid type A influenza virus. From the United States, the new virus spread rapidly around the world. It presented with generic flu-like symptoms followed by respiratory failure. Transmission is the same as for other types of influenza strains.
re-emerging infections. Diseases that were previously controlled have been associated with new epidemics. The containment of disease requires appropriate protection to prevent transmission. This protection may involve use of PPE or isolation of the patient. Transmission is limited by standard precautions and specific precautions based on the mode of transmission of the disease. Standard precautions should be used for routine care of patients. The use of standard precautions should be practiced with each patient contact to limit the risk of cross-infection. Use standard precautions when exposed to blood or body fluids and procedures that are high risk for splash. Procedures which induce coughing and when invasive procedures are being utilized. The five moments of hand hygiene have been shown to reduce cross-contamination significantly. Staff should practice and advise patients to practice cough etiquette when respiratory infections are suspected. Airborne precautions limit the risk of infection from aerosolization. Besides influenza, TB, chickenpox, missiles are further examples of airborne infections requiring appropriate precautions. In the ambulance setting, the use of N95 mask for the staff, surgical mask on the patient, and no recirculation of the AC can significantly reduce the risk of transmission. Contact precautions should be used in cases where transmission can occur via contact with contaminated body fluids or blood. Contact precautions include the use of gowns and gloves. Immunization can protect against some infections and should be considered an important part of the healthcare workers' prevention program. Finally, if you become sick, avoid contact with other staff and patients until you are free of symptoms to avoid becoming the bearer of bad germs and contaminate other people.